So what we're going to do now is explore some materials we're just going to mess about because sometimes um, not every educator has the chance to, has had the chance to use clay and watercolors and things like charcoal and different kinds of pencils. So we'll explore this a little bit and it might help you introduce these materials to children. Um, and my hope is that after this session you'll be able to experiment with these materials yourself. So first of all, um, clay, this is natural clay. Um, it's quite, um, when it's moist, it's quite sticky. It's very malleable. You have to keep clay moist in order for children to be able to use it because um, if it hardens, of course, it's gonna be brittle it's, and it's gonna be very stiff. Clay does um, provide a great deal of strengthening of, of fine motor muscles, um, so it is good that it's a little bit stiff. It behaves completely differently than plasticine, modeling clay, um, and things like Play-Doh, which doesn't stick to itself, so it's not very satisfying in terms of time trying to make something. So with clay, you'll see that it sort of holds its shape um, quite nicely. Whatever you do with it, you pinch it. Often children will begin by just pinching and squeezing and stretching, finding out how much it will stretch before it breaks. But a tip that um, we should offer to children when they start to really build with clay is how to join it together. And there's, uh, you know, different pieces together. And there's a particular skill to that. So if you've got two pieces like this, and let's just um, make one side a little flat, you can see how you can mold it even into a cube. It's very easy. You can press it to make flat sides, um, all sorts of ways. Ways. and children will discover this by themselves. We don't need to teach them this. This is something they will, they will learn. But if I wanted to join this piece to this piece, I would use a little tool like this. Um, you don't have to have a special clay tool. You can use something like a toothpick, something like that. And what you do is you provide a little bit of sort of cross hatching. You do, you do this, you cross hatch each side with a sharp implement um, and then you wet it. You'll always need water around when you're using clay. So you wet it a little bit um, and then it will, it will stick. Um, and when it dries, it will be very strong. Um, it will stay there. So one thing about wetting clay, um, when you're working with infants, um, especially um, who aren't able to do as much with clay, sometimes it's nice to use just the regular moistened clay as it is, and they will pinch and they will poke and make holes, those sorts of things, but also to have them um, put water on it because it will make it very sort of slippery and slimy, and that's a completely different sensory experience. So that's something, you know, another offering to make to infants. Every time you use clay, you should have a bowl of water available for the children to rinse off their hands because um, you can't do this in the sink. If you do this in the sink, it will block your sink. It will harden in the pipes and, it will, and it, you'll get this residue. Speaking of residue, the residue is really important. When you use something like a jar or, or a little bowl, what you want to do is not throw this away, um, but to let it settle. The clay residue will settle to the bottom and you'll get this layer of sort of like um, silt. And what this is, it's called slip. And you, when it's settled, it takes a day or so for it to settle. You keep this jar of slip, you pour the water off the top and this residue that's in the bottom you, it's precious, it's like gold, you use it like glue. So again, if you wanted to stick one piece of clay to another, you would take some of this slip like glue and you would spread it on and you would stick with it. And so the children can be part of um, monitoring this jar of slip, pouring things off and, and keeping the slip in a little container always covered up. And the other thing about clay is that you do need to cover it when you're finished building, when the children are still working on something and they want to save it till the next day, you cover it with a moistened cloth that will keep it nice and pliable and you can keep working with it. If you accidentally leave the top off the container or you don't moisten it, you can reconstitute it. You can put it in um, about an inch of water and let it soak up the water. That takes some time. You, you don't really want to have to do that. And then for the children who are a little bit um, wary of being too messy and they don't like to be sticky, dampened cloths on the table uh, are reassuring for them that they can clean their hands off whenever they want to. But really, um, clay, as, as educators should know, um, part of the joy of using it is getting messy and, and feeling the consistency and the sensory aspect of the clay. So this is something for you to practice and try out and mess about with.